Phil, that was Lama Surya Das. Uh, fascinating guy. I mean, tremendous sense of humor. Uh, all these years of meditation and spending time in India <coughs> and in lamasaries and monasteries and, and all, but uh, his personality is still very much intact. Has a tremendous uh, uh, <coughs> sense, like I mentioned, of humor and uh, not, because you know, also yeah, you well, think of the you monk can, as the you serious. You can take the boy out of Brooklyn, but you can't take Brooklyn out of the boy, as they say. Right, and what we've discovered, there are many spiritual luminaries, including yourself, that got their start in, in Brooklyn. <laughs> uh, amazing. And uh, I think it was a land of uh, that whole area of New York. Very strong personalities. And when you get a lot of people bunched in close together like that, uh, give them a decent education, they start seeking uh, deeper meaning. I think that really uh, is true, not, not just in New York, but many places in the world uh, that have produced yeah. uh, numerous seekers. How, how did you first yep. connect with him? <clears throat> well, you know, like a lot of other people we've interviewed on the show, um, it came out of my research from my books. So, um, you know, he was one of the uh, people I interviewed or, or what would you be doing? Number of years ago. And um, I'm aware of his work because, you know, I just try to keep keep informed about all the teachers out there. And I know people who studied with him and uh, have learned a lot from him. And, um, you know, he, he's also had some very good books. So, you know, he's been in my awareness. And then when we were both invited to uh, share a platform together in Lexington, Massachusetts, I realized we'd never interviewed him, so we should. And so here we are. What, what, do, you, what do you hope to discuss with him in Lexington? Well, it's, it's uh, an event being sponsored by uh, Lexington uh, a Community School something or other. Mm -hmm. And um, the guy who put it together uh, is a fan of American Veda and he want, he knew I was going to be in the area. So he, he thought I could give a talk on, you know, how the East has come to the West and that uh, by bringing uh, Lama Surya Das, who lives there uh, in to the program, we would have a, you know, an even more balanced perspective because I focused on the Vedic or yogic Hindu uh, influx and, and, Surya is uh, from the Buddhist tradition, so we'd have, um, plus we could have some fun. So that's yeah. how it came about. Sounds like it will be. Uh, and uh, uh, I, one thing we didn't ask him, I was curious, uh, he chose the uh, Buddhist sort of uh, tradition as opposed to the uh, Vedic tradition. Uh, not that there's such an enormous difference, uh, you know, no. when you get down to the basics. But uh, And it seems like Buddhism overall has uh, maybe a little bit more than, than sort of uh, the, uh, the Buddhist tradition seems to have caught on in the U.S., this mindfulness meditation and whatnot coming out of uh, Buddhist tradition, that that seems to be very popular now. And, and maybe that has to do with the Dalai Lama being a popular uh, pop, uh, figure in pop culture now even. Well, part, but don't forget uh, back in the 50s, uh, you know, Zen was extremely popular. Um, there was uh, there were a few uh, important uh, Japanese teachers teaching and writing about Zen, and then um, Catholic culture people like Allen Ginsberg and Gary Snyder and the whole Beat generation uh, popularized Zen. And then um, in the same generation that uh, you and I belong to, uh, people, many people went to India, many people had gurus, and some of those people uh, found their way to uh, Buddhist teachers and paths right. and, instead of the yogic ones. And some people were very eclectic and drawing on both because... You know they have so much in common. We like to you know distinguish between Hinduism and Buddhism as if you know they were radically different. But you know Buddha himself was you know Hindu. He right. was born in you know that tr Vedic tradition and you know became a yogi and all that and started his own thing and it became um, you know something separate and given a different name. 
just as you know, Jesus started out a Jew, and suddenly we had something called Christianity. Right. So, Actually, you, know, you the, could argue that uh, Jesus started as a Jew and ended as a Jew. He never was not a, a yeah, non-Jew. That's right. It's just that, yeah. It, it, and, how, and yeah. I don't think Buddha would have been familiar with the term Buddhism. Right. He was just teaching, you know, a, a reform or a uh, variation, uh, his own expression of, you know, perennial wisdom. Right. So a lot of people, um, I, the story I heard was that um, some of the people who went to be with uh, Ram Dass and his guru, Neem Karoli Baba, in the early 70s, um, wanted a practice. Um, you know, and, and Neem Karoli didn't teach many practices. He would have a kind of referral system. You know, to you know, for yoga teachers and meditation right. teachers, and some of the ones he, you know, he he valued and sent people to see were Buddhist meditation teachers. So, Interesting. Let, let, know, let me uh, ask you: uh, uh, in your writings on uh, Yogananda, when Yogananda was teaching in the West, say in the 1930s, 1940s, in the in the states, so, uh, was there much uh, uh, Buddhism uh, in the states at that time? And is it anything he ever commented on? Oh, I, he in his you know his uh, organization had a, a magazine that was sometimes quarterly, sometimes monthly, and they'd have um, articles about uh, all the different world's traditions, and so Buddhism would have been part of that. He would have valued Buddha the same way he valued Jesus and and all the great gurus of his own tradition. Um, people like him don't make those distinctions. You know, Buddha is held you know, very high in in the Vedic world. And so he, I don't know, there were some, there were always some Buddhist teachers around, but it wasn't anything like um, it would become in the, in, from the 50s on. Well, well this is uh, May 2nd, 2018, when we did this uh, uh, recording. And for those listening uh, during this period of time, uh, uh, what is your uh, schedule like for the next couple of months uh, in regard to promoting oh, your man, book I'm on about Yogananda. To start, I'm about to start traveling a lot, uh, doing events for the life of Yogananda. And where can people doing, get uh, your, uh, your, uh, your schedule if you're going to be speaking? or It'll be, or it'll, it, I don't want to list everything, but it's on my website. If people go to philipgoldberg.com and look for uh, upcoming events, you'll see my schedule. I'm going to be, you know, people will be listening to this at various times. So if right. I mention dates, it, right. it, it'll well, be Well, that's why late. I said it was May 2nd, 2018. <laughs> Somebody might be listening to this, you know, 2022, you know. That's right. 2022, right. and they'll uh, be but, thinking, wait a second, I'll be there, you know. Hey, nobody showed up. Well, you're off <laughs> by four years. But we did mention yeah. that at the end of May, I'll be in Massachusetts, and one of the events will be uh, the one with uh, Lama Surya Das. I'm also doing book events in Cambridge and elsewhere, and then New York at the Open Center on uh, June 8th. I hope people come to that. I'm doing a meditation retreat at Kripalu. Uh, there's a lot of other things coming up, and uh, I just you know, have to make sure I remember to get on the plane. Yeah, <laughs> and, you'll be here, there, and, and everywhere. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. This is going to sound self-serving, but I'm going to do it. Please. You know, the life of my bi- bi- biography of Yogananda, the life of Yogananda is out now. I encourage people to read it, of course, but I really want to make an appeal that if you like the book, go to Amazon, say something nice about it on the uh, books page. Um, I just really want to make that appeal because I'm told it makes a difference. Great. We'll do that in uh, Amazon.com. Amazon is is here, it is everywhere. So uh, yes, it is. all encompassing. And uh uh, like Amazon is one with everything. One with, you know, and for anybody that hasn't heard the joke, he said it was the punchline <laughs> of a joke. His new book title, "Make Me One with Everything," which I thought was fabulous. That he, he, you know, he, he, uh, he's very light about very, uh, you know, profound and heavy issues. Uh, the, the the joke goes: uh, I went to the uh, hot dog vendor and I said, "I know what did the Buddhist monk say to the hot dog vendor?" And the answer is, "Make me one with everything." So that's there the you joke. Go. Which I thought was very funny right. the first time I heard. Anyway, <laughs> all right, Phil, till next time. I was going to say we'll Okey have a doke. joke in a month, but probably not. All right. All right, Dennis. Next See you time, later. Over and out.